I've been trying some different ways to solder lits, things I found on the internet, most of which don't work. I did find a way to, to solder it without uh, any special tools, just stuff you might have around the house, like a soldering iron. So let me go through the research I did first. And uh, the thing I found that the professionals use is a soldering pot, which is what it sounds like. It's a bowl full of solder and you dip the, the Litz wire into it. And there's a special technique where you dip it down and move it across and lift it up. Yeah, well, those cost real money. They're dangerous. I mean, you got a pot full of molten lead, basically. And how often am I, am I gonna really use this? I mean, you know, I'm gonna make what, four or five Litz coils maybe. And there's two ends on each one. And so maybe 10, 10 ends I'm gonna use it for, so no. There are also molten salt strippers. And oh baby, yeah, those things are really big bucks and they really high temperature. So uh, you can find stuff if you want to on that about just Google molten salt stripper. And there's some companies that produce them. Yeah, there's a lot of internet junk that says use chemicals and some of these are really nasty. I mean, they are extremely dangerous. Just don't do it. Don't do it. It's just not worth it. I mean, soldering's dangerous enough. Always be sure to wear the masks and, you know, uh, eye protection and keep your hands out of the way. But yeah, some of these are really bad. So uh, I have tried all the following and failed. Uh, methylene chloride or dichloromethane. Uh, it's a paint stripper that failed. Didn't even soften, didn't even soften the, the coating on the wire. Acetone, ditto. Alcohol, methyl, ethyl, isopropyl, nothing, I, no effect. Paint thinner, absolutely no effect. Active fluxes, no, nope. Uh, and other combinations of these, not at all. So I've not mentioned some of the things that I found on the internet because they're just too dangerous to try. I don't want to point anybody in that direction because it's just unnecessary. And none of them even softened the enamel after a day of soaking in these chemicals. So just, you know, not worth it. The uh, flame stripping is something that people recommend. So that's where you just use a cigarette lighter to, to burn the uh, coating off. And what I found consistently is it leaves burned and melted coating behind and it's stuck to the strands and that has to be scraped off. And when you're talking about fine litz wire, it just, you know, you're just gonna break it off. So the strands melt, oxidize, weak, and break. Let me show you my experiment with that. Uh, you can see as soon as I touch it, it melted it back. Now I stick it in there again and it just starts whatever. So sure, you might be able to get that to work, but is it gonna be consistent? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, so the AM frequency litz is 0 0.406 millimeter diameter wire or 46 wire gauge. The wire in this clip is 0.16, it's 34 wire gauge. And if you look at the areas of these two, the wire in this video has 6.4 times more copper. So you can imagine sticking some really fine wire into that flame. Yeah, like I said, it might work, but I don't think it's gonna work reliably. Here we go again. Uh, so I found two techniques just using my plain soldering iron. It's a 20 watt, 130 watt. It's got a little button here I can push for the high power, the turbo boost, if you will. It works about 50% of the time for me. So you kind of flip a coin and you know, that's good enough for DIYers. You can do it. If it doesn't happen, you snip back a little bit. You're, you're talking about a centimeter, you know, you lose. So you snip it off and you just do it again. Uh, First, you need to know that there are two basic types of lits. One is non-solderable and the other is solderable. And guess which one is easier to do? Yeah, so I've got a sample of both. Let's talk about solderable first because it's just plain easier. It's pretty much trivial, in fact. Uh, the insulation breaks down at normal soldering temperatures and doesn't contaminate a lot. This is a piece of it. You can see the close-up on it. You can see that the casing's pretty much melted back. It left a little spot here and a little spot there. But overall, that's, that's soldered. I used Kester 951 and rosin core solder on this. Of course, we'll go and we'll do a demo because on the internet, unless you see somebody doing it, yeah, don't believe it. Uh, and like I said earlier, solder's pretty much like bare copper, a little slower. And then there's a little bit of ash to wipe away when you're done, and then you'll, you'll snip off the tip to get rid of the uh, the slag, if you will. Okay, so let's talk about non-solderable. This stuff is not fun. Here's an example of it. The blue shielded stuff I have is non-solderable. 
and the insulation does not break down at normal soldering temperatures. Yeah, uh, when I was in school, we did a, uh, a project where we made a transformer and we were working at making a high performance transformer. And I rode away and I got samples of some of these wires. And this is 40 years ago. And the stuff on that, on those strands of wire was tough. I mean, it didn't want to burn off. It didn't want to even be scraped off. And I'm sure they've improved it in the last 40 years, which explains why this stuff is just so hard to, to deal with. Okay, uh, I'm rambling. Let's go on. First, I use a soldering iron to burn a ring around the jacket. And again, I'll show you, but uh, just use the soldering iron to melt this outer jacket. And then I use my fingers just to pull off the jacket. And if done correctly, it pretty much just slides off and it's, you're not going to break any wires doing it. And then I fluxed it. The second step, and this, what we're going to do here is we're going to emulate a solder pot. We're going to create a micro solder pot, if you will, with our soldering iron. So I just melt some solder onto my soldering iron until there's a blob hanging down below. Now this can fall off and it often falls off. So I do this over a metal table where nothing is flammable around there. Nothing I'm going to damage when it drips. And definitely I don't want it falling on me. I've got enough scars. So no. Then I pull this slowly through the blob. And yeah, as we see in the, uh, in the example, when I do this, you have to make sure that that's inside the blob and not just touching on the outside because lead is heavy and copper is relatively light and it will push it away. If the solder oxidizes badly during the pull and it starts to cake, well, then I clear the soldering iron, I clean the tip, and I repeat the process until the litz is, is, nicely, uh, is nicely soldered. Then I snip off the end because most of this, so I'm going to work from this end to this end, and it's going to carry all of the junk, the slag, if you will, to this end, and then you just snip that off if it frays. So when I'm done soldering, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rub the end of this and see if it frays apart. If it does, that's a fail and you just snip it off and you know, snip it off back here and start again. If there's no fraying, well, then you're pretty much done. Okay, so now it's time to go actually do it. This is solderable lits and you will definitely be able to tell the difference between this and the, the non-solderable. First, we'll treat it with a little bit of flux. And this seems to help. This is a Kester 951. And then the only trick is for me to keep this so you guys can see it because it's so tiny. But uh, just work slowly. I mean, it does take time for this stuff to burn away. And normally I would say you don't touch the solder to the, to the wire, to the workpiece, or to the soldering iron rather, but to the workpiece. But in this case, Boy, there's just not too much. There's no way to really avoid it. Okay, and there it is. Um, it just takes a little bit longer. You have to give it time to burn away the casing and the insulation. But uh, yeah, and I would trim off that end just a little bit because that's where the junk usually goes. You start soldering here, you move away, and it carries away the, uh, the burn material to the end, and then you snip off the end. This is a piece of non-solderable litz. And I'm going to have to reset this after I do this because I have to press this down against the metal table. But after I'm done with this, I'm going to have to lift it all back up. So I'm going to have to refocus and everything. Um, so the first thing to do is remove the jacket. And I'm just going to do that by setting the soldering iron on here. And then rolling it around until I have a, have a uh, melted spot all the way around it like that and I will know that it is ready to go because it will just come off with my with a bear's pull of my fingernails. Let's see if we're there yet. Nope. This outer casing is tough and I don't want to put any more stress on the inner wire than necessary and I have to go around to all the sides And you can see why this is non-solderable because this is just not like turning to ash like they talk about in many types of lits. This stuff is, there we go. Yeah, you can see that. Now I'm going to twist this like I would normal wire. Get that out of there. 
twist this around like that. Okay, I'm going to treat it with a little flux. Does this really help? I'm not sure. And I've got a stray wire there. I need to fix that. Let's see, get that up off of there. Okay, better. Now it is time to put the solder drip on the bottom of the soldering iron and then run this through there. So again, let me reset and get things focused differently and I will do that. I forgot to turn on the fan. So I'm just getting nothing but smoke in my face. So first thing I'm going to do is get a big blob of solder on here. Now normally you wouldn't put the solder directly on the soldering iron. And then I am just going to run this through here slowly, moving it slowly and applying more solder as I need it. And the solder is turning crusty. Eh, we haven't made much progress. I'm going to try a higher temperature. I'm going to kick it up to high temp. Solder is going crusty on me. There we go, it's starting to solder. And the solder is going crusty. Okay, let's give it another pass. And I think we're going to call that one good. We'll do a close-up on it and see how it is. And as I mentioned earlier, we'll snip off the tip like that because it's usually not very good. It's a lot of oxidized material there. Bring this back into focus. There we are. Try to tease apart the tip and not really. Everything seems to be soldered in place. It's not uh, peeling apart. I've got one strand that's a little loose, but it seems to be soldered farther down, so it's okay. I would call that a success. Well, that's everything I've learned from my experimentation on soldering Let's Wire. Hopefully there's a couple safe methods in there that you can use if you choose to solder Let's Wire. Okay, till next time.